Let us now start uh, discussing the Pareto optimality notion in quasi-linear domain. Pareto optimality or Pareto efficiency as we have already referred to earlier uh, is a notion where the we talk about the, uh, the development of each of the utilities of every player uh, rather than maximizing the sum of uh, or an aggregate measure of something. And also the difference is that in this Pareto optimality, we will have to look at the, the payment component as well while in allocative efficiency, we were just looking at the allocation component of the decision problem. So uh, let us uh, look at uh, the, the definition first and then we will connect the Pareto optimality with the allocative efficiency. So what does this say? So we are going to call a mechanism, uh, a mechanism in the quasi-linear domain. To be Pareto optimal, if for every type profile the following thing happens, that there does not exist any allocation, uh, allocation, so a different allocation which is not equal to the allocation of f theta, and the set of payments p pi 1 to pi n, with the additional condition that this payment is at least as much as the payment of the original mechanism. So if the mechanism is extracting this much amount of payment, allocation and the payment that we are going to uh, uh, talk about also at least ex extracts the same amount of payment, then this uh, the utility under that uh, allocation uh, and that payment uh, is at least as much as the utility uh, when you are under this mechanism f comma p. So if there does not exist any such uh, b and pi, then we are going to call that this is Pareto optimal. In some sense, you cannot really make it better for uh, weakly better for all the players, and you can make it strictly better for one player. So of course, this is uh, this inequality is weak for all the players, and it uh, this inequality is going to be strict for at least one agent. So why do we need this additional constraint? Um, let us look at this. So if we, uh, yeah, so suppose we did not have this constraint, then what would have happened? Uh, one could have easily found some um, uh, some allocation and could have given uh, sufficient subsidy. So maybe all this pi i were uh, negative. So that is a mechanism designer is essentially paying uh, a lot of money to the agents. And therefore this inequality would have been very easy to satisfy. So we don't uh, want that kind of a thing. So we uh, uh, also, in addition to the fact that this inequality should be satisfied, we also want that this um, counter example of, uh, of this uh, uh, allocation and payment should be such that this payment at least extracts the same amount of money as the original mechanism. All right, so now we are going to connect this notion of Pareto optimality. Uh, simply speaking, the Pareto optimality is saying that uh, uh, if you are if you are given a specific allocation and a payment rule then there does not exist any other uh, allocation and payments uh, the payment the sum of the payments being at least as much as the sum of the payments in the original mechanism such that all the players are uh, better off in that uh, new allocation and payment and there is at least one agent who is strictly better off so uh, here we are going to compare the Pareto optimality with allocative efficiency. We are going to say that uh, if it is Pareto optimal, uh, then it implies and it is implied by the fact that it is allocatively efficient. So this is uh, this is kind of equivalent. So uh, in this quasi-linear domain, we are not really uh, uh, looking at the, the payments. There is a reason for that. I mean, Pareto optimality and allocative efficiency are one and the same. So you don't really gain something more by defining Pareto optimality uh, uh, by putting restrictions on the payment. Rather, it is sufficient to look at the allocation alone. So let us try to prove this. We will first prove in the forward direction that is Pareto optimality implies allocative efficiency. Uh, rather, we will prove it in the, in the following way that if it is not allocative efficiency, so that Pareto optimality implies allocative efficiency is equivalent to saying if it is not allocatively efficient, then it is not Pareto optimal as well. So what does uh, not uh, allocative efficiency mean? That there exists some uh, uh, allocation which is uh, not the allocation given by this mechanism. 
such that the sum of the valuation is at least as much as the sum of the valuation under that uh, uh, under that allocation rule f so remember what was allocative efficiency it was looking at the sum of all these uh, valuations a comma theta i and uh, summing over all the agents and picking that alternative which maximizes the sum right so this was allocative efficiency so um, it is not allocatively efficient means that there exists some b which actually is larger than this sum and this is uh, this is going to happen for some theta now because this is larger than that if we just look at the difference between them and define that as delta that is definitely going to be positive uh, by the by the choice that we have made now we are going to construct a, so uh, what do we have to show we will have to show a pareto optimality uh, a violation of pareto optimality so we'll have to create a counter example we already have found some allocation uh, which could be a candidate uh, uh, allocation to form that counter example uh, all that uh, that is remaining is to find the payment and this is how we are going to uh, construct that payment so let's say this pi i uh, so here it is uh, sum over all the agents we are looking at the individual differences so v i b theta i minus v i of f theta theta i and then we are summing the payment so this payment is originally given because that is that is the mechanism itself so we are given the mechanism we are just uh, using the same payment here and subtracting out this delta so which is guaranteed to be positive by n now why we have chosen this specific form will become clear in one or two steps so now we, what we can say is uh, uh, because we have uh, our um, candidate and uh, this we are going to define for every i i in n now uh, this ca uh, candidate payment uh, and the allocation B is our counter example to pair to optimality then we should be able to show that the utility here which is VI B of theta I minus pi I so just look at the, um, the corresponding example so this this uh, definition of pair to optimality if this happens then we, we are certain that this is not going to be pair to optimal so we, uh, we write this left hand side minus the right hand side here so minus this uh, right hand side and we see that that is uh, equal to uh, delta over n i mean this is just reorganizing this uh, this equality here and uh, because of the fact that this delta is uh, uh, positive strictly positive then this uh, inequality will be positive that means that uh, for every agent i uh, in this new allocation and payment the uh, uh, the difference between the utility of that player is getting strictly better off than the uh, than the allocation and payment under the original mechanism and we have we are also not violating the payment condition uh, because if we just take the sum over all these pi i's you can see that this sum uh, i mean this this difference is exactly equal to delta uh, if you are summing over all the agents so once you sum over all this uh, all these agents uh, all that you are uh, and you are summing over this delta over n so this will become exactly equal to delta and that is exactly equal to this part so these two parts will cancel out uh, what will be remaining is the sum over all this pi so this pi i is exactly equal to sum over pi's so we are also maintaining that payment condition so we found that f is not pair to optimal and here is that counter example okay so we have uh, proved the forward direction now let us look at the reverse direction and we are going to prove it in, in a very similar way reverse direction means that uh, if it is allocatively efficient we will have to show that it is pair to optimal rather we show that if it is not pair to optimal it cannot be uh, allocatively efficient so what does not pair to optimal mean that there exists some allocation and this payments such that uh, this uh, payment uh, inequality the payment constraint is met and also this inequality uh, holds for all agents uh, in weak form and then it is strict for some agent j in n. Now if you just sum over all these uh, inequalities because this inequality is going to be strict for some j so the this uh, weak inequality will become a strict inequality when we are taking the sum over all, all of them. So fair enough now we have uh, we are just looking at the difference between this uh, sum of this uh, 
valuations under B and the sum of the valuations under F, right? So we are just uh, transforming it on the right hand side. So we can see that this is strictly going to be larger than sum over pi i minus this sum over uh, pi theta i. Uh, and uh, because of the assumption, so because this is not Pareto efficient, so this inequality is also going to get satisfied. So we see that this particular term, the right hand side of this uh, uh, inequality is actually non-negative. And that implies that this is, uh, this at B, the sum of the valuations of all the agents is getting strictly better than the sum of the valuation at uh, f of theta. And therefore, uh, f of theta is f is not an allocatively efficient uh, allocation. So that essentially proves both the directions. So as soon as we have Pareto efficiency uh, or Pareto optimality in this quasi-linear domain, uh, we we can immediately say that it is allocatively efficient, uh, allocatively efficient, and vice versa. Now let us look at the allocative efficient rule. So. Uh, uh, now we don't really have to worry much about the Pareto optimality because both are the same. Uh, we can focus on allocative efficiency. Now what we can see is that this allocative efficient rule is actually implementable. So how do we design payments? So we have uh, made this point earlier that whenever we say that a specific allocation rule is implementable, that means there exists some payments which will implement that in uh, dominant strategies. So, um, so this uh, rule is the uh, the rule which maximizes the sum of the values of all the agents, and we will have to just construct the payments. And we are going to construct the payment in the following way. And this uh, particular structure is named after Groves, who has actually given this structure. Um, so, what we are going to look at is uh, first for uh, for this uh, while designing the payment for player i we are defining a function h i uh, which is not a function of theta i the, the type of player i it is dependent on the types of all the other agents and the second term and from that we are subtracting out the sum of the values of all the agents except agent i under the same outcome so uh, f efficient is essentially the uh, the allocatively efficient uh, outcome the allocation in this uh, in this context and we are just looking at that but uh, except agent i now this function h i could be arbitrary so you can pick any any uh, any number it can be constant it can be zero whatever it is uh, but it gives you the complete flexibility so what does that mean let us look at this kind of a, a payment rule using an example so suppose we have single indivisible item allocation and there are four agents here their types are given in the following way. The types are given by theta 1 equal to 10, theta 2 8, theta 3 is 6, and theta 4 is 4. Uh, when they get the object, uh, so this type means that uh, this is the value that they get when they get the object, 0 otherwise. And let us also uh, fix this hi theta minus i to be the minimum of theta minus i. This is just an arbitrary thing. I mean, you, you could have chosen some other numbers. The, uh, the corresponding payments should have been different. Now if everyone, so let us assume for now, uh, we will later prove that this is also true, uh, that if everybody reports their true type, then the values of this hi are going to be as follows. Uh, and you can, you can verify that. Now the efficient allocation gives this item to agent 1. Why? Because uh, if, you, if you give it to uh, because this is single indivisible object if you give it to the uh, to this agent you are maximizing the sum of the values right uh, so that is why it is uh, it is allocatively efficient now you can define the corresponding payments and payments exactly as you we have uh, defined in this case so this is going to be h uh, i theta minus i uh, minus the sum of the valuation of all the other agents when it is uh, when the allocation is efficient so in the efficient allocation only agent 1 gets this object and nobody else gets this object so therefore uh, the valuations the sum of the valuation of all the other agents is going to be zero and that agent gets an uh, 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 gets this hi so this uh, h1 is exactly equal to 4 so this is going to be the payment for player 1 now 
when you are looking at player 2, you know that the sum of the valuation, so the efficient allocation gives it to the uh, agent uh, 1. So whose valuation uh, is, is going to be 10. So that is the uh, that is the number that we are putting here. And uh, this one is the H2. And we see that H2 is also 4. So this difference is minus 6, which means that player 2 is getting paid uh, 6 amount of money. And similarly, you can uh, carry out the rest of the calculation. You will see that only player 1 is paying and other players are getting paid. So that is that is an example uh, how if the players were reporting their types truthfully, what will happen in the in, in this context. Now, uh, we are going to make a stronger claim. We are going to claim that this mechanism, this Groves uh, payment mechanism, uh, essentially Groves is a class of mechanism uh, because you can just change the HIs and you, you can get a bunch of payment rules and all of them are essentially members of the Groves mechanisms class. So all this class of Groves mechanisms are DSIC. Now why, we, why is that? Uh, in order to prove DSIC, we will have to satisfy that inequality that we have uh, already defined. And um, let us do it in, in step by step. So we are just focusing on player i uh, and we are arbitrarily picking this player i. So therefore, uh, this is without loss of generality. Suppose its own uh, true type is theta i and uh, other players are reporting theta minus i tilde. So if this agent reports its type truthfully, then the outcome becomes a. And if it misreports to some theta i prime, then the outcome becomes b. Right? So by definition, we know that because this is allocatively efficient, uh, this uh, v i a i theta i plus um, uh, this thing. So we are just uh, writing the sum of the valuations of all the agents at a uh, when uh, this agent is reporting its, its type truthfully. Um, and we are just decomposing it. There is a purpose why we are doing this decomposition because this particular decomposition will show up later in, in our proof and we will use this inequality. And this is going to be at least as much as any other allocation. In particular, if you put B as well, this will also be uh, larger than that because A is essentially the allocatively efficient outcome. Uh, this, uh, uh, so whenever we are looking at this type, so uh, this type is the true type theta i when its true type is theta i and you are trying to maximize it uh, you will get the allocation a as your outcome b might be an efficient allocation when you are uh, looking at treating as if the player i is true type is theta i prime and not theta i so when its true type is theta i a maximizes this sum uh, 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 over all the other alternatives in particular the alternative b as well okay so let's save this equation one and we'll reuse it now what do we really need to show uh, so utility of player i when he reports theta i is at least as much as the utility when he reports theta i prime so let us write down the left hand side of the dsic inequality so this is the the left hand side so we have the the uh, the rule is nothing but f efficient the, the, the mechanism is f efficient and P, p1 up to pn this is the mechanism and under this mechanism what is the uh, the utility when player i is reporting his type truthfully that is uh, reporting his, its type to be theta i and the other players are reporting their types to be theta minus i tilde that is given by this so player i is reporting theta i and others are reporting theta minus i tilde similarly the payment is calculated according to that um, and uh, we are evaluating player i is evaluating this uh, utility uh, when its true type is theta i that is its uh, true type and uh, therefore this inequality should hold when its type is uh, theta i so let us uh, write this down writing down the, the the payment function so we have all we already know that the payment is given by this gross payment rule so we can just expand that out uh, by h i theta minus i tilde and the other part is the uh, the sum of the valuation of all the agents except agent i at the same efficient allocation so now there is a reason why we have chosen uh, this structure of of a specific form so now we know that this this is nothing but a 
because the that is the allocation when agent i is reporting its uh, type to be theta i others are reporting theta minus i tilde and that is the same uh, here as well so we can club these two things together this and that and then we can write that uh, this is going to be the sum of the valuations of all the agents right so sum of the valuation at the efficient allocation and because of that fact that this is essentially maximizing the sum so uh, uh, what is the definition of if uh, uh, efficient just uh, um, do this uh, exercise yourself so if i theta i and theta minus i tilde what is it it is actually the argmax over the summation of all these v i's a of theta i so you can uh, imagine that this uh, uh, you, you, you can just write so instead of uh, writing it in this way it is better to write it in the following way so we just isolate this theta agent i because its type is theta i for all the other agents so sum over v j's where it is a and theta uh, minus so theta j so this is agent j theta j tilde us j is not equal to i so if you look at this sum here uh, uh, it is actually maximizing this sum and uh, because this is the f efficient thing then we can actually write it this to be uh, greater than equal to so when whenever we are plugging the same value in, inside this a we are going to get this uh, uh, this sum to be greater than equal to the same sum vi of uh, of theta i plus the sum over all these things uh, for every other for every other b which is not equal to a and that is exactly what we have written here this is the inequality one and we are just now using the same fact that uh, this is uh, because this is uh, greater than or equal to any other alternative uh, in particular when we are looking at this alternative b which is nothing but when a player i is reporting its type to be theta i prime and uh, yeah so that's that's it um, we can actually uh, 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 write this the same inequality here this will this will get satisfied think about it uh, i mean this will be clear because there is a little bit of notation involved um, uh, it might get uh, get a little confusing in the very beginning but remember the fact that agent i's true type is theta i and this is exactly where we are trying to maximize it so everywhere you will look at that uh, what is happening when we are trying to maximize this we are looking at agent i's true type is theta i and that is why it is the uh, the argmax on that uh, profile on that profile of thetas and um, therefore this is going to be greater than equal to this inequality for all b's for all b's which are not equal to a and uh, uh, in particular this inequality will hold when, whenever we are uh, speaking a very specific outcome which is theta i when agent i is reporting theta i prime and theta minus i uh, others are reporting theta minus i tilde and we are running the same efficient allocation this could be a different uh, alternative a different allocation but for that allocation this inequality should hold and that is that is essentially the end of the proof now we can club these two things together so notice that this is completely independent of the type uh, reported by player i so this will not change um, and this two things together we can write it as the payment of uh, agent i when it is reporting its type to be theta i prime and others are reporting theta minus i tilde so together you can write that uh, uh, this uh, right hand side is nothing but when he is misreporting when the agent i is misreporting to theta i prime this is the utility that it gets and because of this uh, inequality is getting satisfied we can say that this mechanism f efficient is implemented by this uh, gross payment rule so uh, actually this gro gross mechanism the class of gross mechanism is actually uh, dominant strategy incentive compatible that is because of the fact that we have shown this for any arbitrary i so you can repeat this argument for any i and it, it uh, this inequality will hold for all i in it.